Today's video can be a super tough one for lots of us, discovering our design style. The top two questions I get asked over and over, number one, how do I know what my style is? And number two, is how do I begin decorating? But you need to know your design style in order to begin decorating, or otherwise you're just gonna end up with a hodgepodge of decor and you're not gonna be happy. Now that's not to say that you might not have more than one design style in your home. I am a mixture of like farmhouse, traditional, and even a little pop of glam here and there. So your home is most likely going to have more than one design style. Today, I wanna help you achieve your goal of finding your design style so then we can move forward and get to how do we begin decorating. And I know some of you aren't into decorating, but I can guarantee that this video will be so helpful for you in a lot of different aspects. Because once you know your design style, even if you just ran to Walmart and you were going to buy yourself some new like dish towels or hanging towels for your bathroom, this can even help you make sure that you buy ones that you'll know that you enjoy and not just picking up ones and then they come home and they don't look that great in your bathroom. I'm gonna try and explain this and talk to you just like I would just anyone and not in a whole design fashion because I feel like sometimes when designers talk like that, it's just super overwhelming and you don't really get out of it what you need. You're like, okay, well I hear what you're saying but I still don't understand what you mean by that. So we're just gonna really just like bare bones talk about it in a really nice way that I know you're gonna enjoy. All right, I went and I got my little laptop because that's how we're gonna begin because the most simple way to do your very first step is to go on Pinterest. And I know everybody talks about, well, I see all kinds of things on Pinterest, but I don't understand like how that's gonna help me, you know, get my design style. So let me show you how I do it. Let me show you, it's so, so simple. All right, so the very first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go on Pinterest and you're gonna make a designated board for things that you like. So say you're wanting to redo your living room or you're wanting to redo your bedroom. So you're going to start just looking at all the different pins. You've made your designated board, so when you see things that you like, you're gonna save them to that board. All the pins saved over to that board. I want you to pin at least 40 to 50 pictures. I know that seems like a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not a lot. And it's fun just to enjoy yourself looking at other photos and search things that you think that you like. Or like say, you know, like I love blue in my living room. So I start to search blue living room and like different things like that that help give me a little bit more of a like honed in search. But if you don't, just start putting in living room decor ideas or living room furniture ideas and just the basics and it'll start to show you a whole bunch of different types. So I want you to pin your 40 to 50 pictures. Then I want you to wait two days, 48 hours. Don't look at those pins again. Walk away, do something else. Come back to Pinterest two days later and then open that board back up and start looking at those pins again. I want you to delete the ones that you now no longer like, because guess what? You are going to find ones that you're like, oh, why'd I pin that? And get rid of those. Now here's where we're gonna start narrowing it down. I want you to look at the photos and see what is causing you to pin those pictures. What's that common element? Is it the color? Is it woods? Is, you know, like I'm drawn to like rustic light wood or are you drawn, you know, is it the wood? Is it the fabric that you're being drawn to? What is the common theme that you're noticing throughout all these pictures? That right there is going to tell you so much that you probably don't even realize that you're doing. Now here's where people get really confused on knowing what their likes are as to what is that design style. And so I'm gonna put down in the description box a list of quite a few different design styles and what makes them a design style. So let me give you a couple examples so you can start to get your mind thinking that way. Okay, I have my glasses on here so I can read it off of my laptop so I make sure that I read it correctly. So here's an example, traditional, and this is what's down below. Traditional usually tends to be ornate, chandeliers, oriental rugs, moldings, fabric patterns such as damask or florals. Remember how earlier today I said I was a mixture of farmhouse and traditional? What's in my living room? Oriental rugs, chandeliers, moldings. I have prints on like patterns on my pillows of like 
floral. I mean, I am dead on. You can start to see like, oh, that's what defines traditional. So this is going to be down below. It's going to be very useful for you. And you're going to be able to be like, well, I already know what my design style is done, but keep watching. <laughs> so something that goes along with finding your design style are a couple little things that we need to address so that your whole room ends up flowing cohesively. So one of the things that you need to ask yourself once you've kind of, you know, figured out what elements that you want in your room through finding your own personal style, the thing that you're going to want to find out is what is the function of that room? Like what's the functionality? One of my favorite questions I always ask is like, what purpose does this room serve? So since we've already been talking about my living room and how it's traditional, I'm in here in my living room right now and I am recently going through a kind of a design change myself and it has a lot to do with functionality over style and that's what has to come into play when you're planning your room. I purchased two really pretty Pottery Barn recliners and I thought they were going to be great. I thought I was going to have these the rest of my life. They were high quality. They were expensive and it was the first time I really went, you know, just like I'm buying these. These are going to be great. I've had them for a year now and I really don't enjoy them at all. And so I am redesigning my whole living room right now based on the fact that it's not functional. Meaning that when I sit in here, this is where I sit every evening. So think about your space. I'm trying to give you real life examples as if we're just some friends sitting here talking to each other. So think about your space. For me, I sit here, I work on my laptop, I watch TV, those kind of things in my chair with my dogs next to me. That's my evening joy. <laughs> and so if I'm sitting in a chair day after day after day that I don't enjoy and the functionality of it isn't working for me, well, I'm going to change it. I want to just suck it up and live with it, but that's a long time to live with being uncomfortable. So I've changed the design of how I'm going to do my living room based on the functionality. So it's very important that you remember that. And how many times can I say functionality in this little section? So while we're still in here in the living room, the next thing you want to ask yourself is, you know, how does this room make you feel or slash how do you want this room to make you feel? I want this room, my living room, to feel cozy. I want to feel cozy and inviting, but yet I do. I want it to look really pretty. So I want the decor to stand out. I want you to walk in. I want you to see the chandelier. I want you to see the pretty decor on the mantle. But at the same time, I want it to be cozy. I want you to have a very comfortable place to set, cozy pillows, cozy throw blankets, and all that. So keep that in mind when you're designing your space. So I kind of just mentioned that when I said, showed you what I want people to see when they walk in, but what's your focal point in your room? Cause that's going to be very important on how you set up your room and the style and the design and everything. If you have one thing that you're focused around, Honestly, the focal point in my room is several different things depending on, cause I have a couple different openings on where you come in. And so it can make a big difference on what you focus on. Me personally, I'm always focused on the TV what, cause I'm facing that way and the fireplace with the mantle. So that's a really beautiful thing to focus in on. Cause it's like great decor, beautiful ambiance, gives you that cozy vibe. So think about what you're going to focus on in that room and kind of start gearing your eye towards your new design pieces that you love and you found that you, you know, enjoy. And that's what you're going to make because whatever you're seeing is what's going to be pleasing. And then one more thing that you're going to want to decide for your room is your wish list. I always make a wish list because what do you want to do in this room? to make it the new design that you love. What do you want to do to the room in order to bring in that new style? Like say I've, you know, I'm like, okay, I realized I'm traditional and what can I do? What can I afford? What's on, you know, in my budget, what's on my wish list that I can do. And so basically I was like, Oh, I could get a new rug. Those are on sale. Or maybe if I paint my walls a color or save up to get the chandelier that I want. So make a wish list of what's important to you the most important at the top and then down because when we get to the end, that's like the accessories and those are usually the least expensive can also add the most wapow. <laughs> and so keep that in mind that 
You don't always have to do big things to change a design in a room. It could be just a few different pieces placed here and there, and that can really start to make the feel of the room. Okay, we've discovered our design style. We've talked all about functionality, the purpose of our room, how we're gonna use it. And now it's really time to get serious about, you know, bringing these items into your home and how do you even know what you're getting or well, and it just, that's it. Everybody just melts down. If you've made it this far, you're doing great because this is the hard part. But we're gonna start to make this a reality. So you you had your board over on Pinterest, which is just you know creative board of like what you're liking. Let's make a mood board. And a lot of people are like, how do I make a mood board? That's too technical, too difficult. It's really not. I'm gonna sit right here and I'm gonna show you a couple little examples of how easy it is to do. So over on Canva, which all this will be listed down below, Go to Canva, it is free. You can upgrade and get the pro version, but you can use Canva for free completely. And you can make mood boards. Under templates, you're just going to put in mood board. It will come up with the templates so easy. So then all you have to do is, say you found a rug that you really love and it's over on Wayfair. Like, I love this rug, I need this from Wayfair. So take a screenshot of it. And then take that rug, put it into Canva. That starts your mood board right there. And it has great options where you can remove the background. So whatever that picture was in there, just you know, click remove the background, take the background away. Now you actually just have the rug. So now you're gonna place that into your mood board. And then here you go. Say you found furniture you like, do the exact same thing. And you can start to see what a whole room would look like. But maybe you're not going to do furniture. Maybe you're just going to paint and add accessories. You can go in, find the exact paint color that you want, put it down as a sample, and set your accessories next to it on the mood board. And then that way you can see how those are gonna look in the room and already really get your mind thinking and seeing how this is all gonna come together. It is not complicated. Something that's like super important that you have to know when you're trying to des you know, design a space, figure out your design style, decorate, you're gonna have trial and error. That's like what I learned in my own living room. <laughs> I thought I had the perfect design and it looked so beautiful and it didn't work out and that's okay. So you have to understand that's okay. You're gonna make decisions that are wrong. And so you gotta put things in there and see what feels you know, most harmonious for you. Oh, that's a fun word, harmonious. I think one of the main things is to remember that your design style is an extension of your personality, your lifestyle. And so you need to just embrace the journey of self-discovering what your design style is and have fun with it. Decorating to me is one of the most fun things. I absolutely, I'm sure you can tell by my enthusiasm, I get so much joy out of it. The next step I wanna be able to do is I wanna show you how to decorate a room from start to finish. This today was mainly just the very tip of the iceberg of you know discovering your design style. I really wanna show you how to decorate a room from start to finish. So if you're overwhelmed or you wanna do a remodel or you just don't even know where to begin, now that you can find your design style, let me show you how to start. Because I had over on Facebook, so follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram. We're all over the place talking about all kinds of things. But one of the questions I got asked was, they wanted to redo their bedroom and they don't even know where to begin. Do they paint the walls first? What about a rug? Do they get the bedding? I wanna show you exactly what is the proven method that I have always used and what has worked for me. So let me know in the comments down below if that is a big interest to you. I think you would really benefit from it. All right, well, we will see you next week. We are starting our fall extravaganza. Get ready, we got fall DIYs, fall decorating, all the things, I can't wait. We'll see you then, bye-bye.